Damn, I look good. I just can't, can't see that far. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody ready? <coughs> yes, Audio. sir. Let's get it. Audio's on. Listo. Listo, Ooh. papisto. We don't miss a Monday. It's also live podcast, man. The most authentic, the most organic podcast out here, baby. <laughs> Never miss a Monday. We haven't. We won't. No matter what happens. No matter how late we're out. No matter how bad Saturday is. No matter how bad Sunday is. Monday mornings, 5 yes, a.m. You know you're gonna catch this one. <laughs> Your host Dusko, everybody's favorite. Yeah, tú sabes, Dylan, Dylan in the house. Dylan coming back from Coachella, so he's he's on a different <laughs> vibra right now. But vinimos on this beautiful beautiful day today. I think it's like the first weekend. Is is it's finally hot. It's finally hot. Yeah. Time beach weather. And we're sitting with one of the most talked about, one of the most known, one of the reddest tacos out there, <laughs> Mr. Teddy Taco in the house, baby. Yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I'm sure you guys see them all over social media. And one of the, man, it's a tikka on IG. Teddy's one, Red Taco has like over 150. 50, 186, I think it is. Yeah, that's how Yeah. I'm good with numbers, by the way. <laughs> How's it living, man? ¿Cómo andas? Muy bien, muchas gracias. Contento estar acá, muy agradecido y contento por compartir acá un poquito de, de nuestra historia. Oh, de tu it. historia. Creo esto vamos a tener es, este podcast, este programa, este episodio. Es no nomás de la marca de Terry, pero de dónde originó todo, la idea. Cómo empezó. Cómo empezó, dónde creció, okay. cuántos hermanos, hermanas, todo. Desde claro el sí, principio adelante. nos vamos. Vamos, Ale. All right, so, ¿de dónde, dónde naciste, dónde creciste? Para empezar ahí. Pues, yo nací acá en Los Ángeles, en Los Ángeles, California. Tuve una infancia media, media, media rara porque yo nací aquí, pero me llevaron de pequeño para México. Mm. So yo llegué a México a aprender la primaria, la secundaria, la secundaria, la prepa. Ya como a la edad de 17 años, me, me regresé para, nos regresamos para acá, para Los Ángeles. Y pues así ha sido mi, mi, mi infancia. ¿Eres de, ¿Tienes hermanos, hermanas? Sí, yo soy el mayor de cuatro. Somos dos hermanos y dos hermanas. Sí. Somos de... de a mi familia del, del estado de Puebla. De de Puebla. Cuatro uh, Puebla, sí. Pues yo, ¿cómo, ¿cómo fue crecer en, la, pues, en México? La primaria, la secundaria. ¿Qué ves diferente de lo que ves aquí en Estados Unidos? Eh, fue un reto porque pues acá estábamos acostumbrados a, a, a la buena vida, se podría decir. Eh. Pues pone que no éramos ricos, pero tampoco éramos pobres. Y llegar a México y vivir pues, en otra situación, pues sí te cambia la perspectiva, te cambia todo. Los niños ya también te hacían bullying porque, porque vistías otros tenis y todo. Entonces fue, fue difícil también adaptarse a otro estilo de vida de rancho porque vienes de la ciudad y llegar a, a, al rancho, uh -huh. pues no es fácil. Pero pues tenías que hacerlo, pues no había de otra opción. Eh, para ustedes crecieron, vamos a decir, como pobres, tenían todo, no les faltaba nada o... Con, ¿Cómo fue esa infancia de, de nacer aquí y de ir para pa allá, pues? Pues no puedo decir que éramos pobres. Gracias a Dios, uh, mis papás han sido muy trabajadores. Mi papá trabajaba acá. Mi mamá siempre le ha gustado las ventas. Entonces, pues siempre había, uh, se podría decir, no éramos ricos, pero tampoco estábamos pobres, pues. Mm. A mi mamá le gustó mucho siempre el comercio. Mi papá le gustó el campo. Uh, de hecho, todavía ahorita él, él está en México y le gusta mucho... Tiene un criadero de, de pavos reales mm. y se dedica a, pues a eso, de a, a, pues a criar pavos reales y venderlos y todo. Entonces, sí, sí. ¡Wow! Y so, obviamente usted, la gente lo conoce por el estilo de tacos que hace. El nombre que, que creó Teddy's Red Tacos. Pero mucha gente no conoce antes de esto. Antes de que creciera Entre Teddy's Como Usted era un Uber driver Sí Así es Usted 
¿Qué, ¿En qué trabajaba usted antes de que todos conocieran este, esos tacos? <risa> esa, esa pregunta, pues, me he dedicado a muchas cosas. A ver. Siempre me gustó ser mi propio... I like to be my own boss. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So, when you like to be your own boss, it's kind of difficult to, to have a job, you know, because... <laughs> You know, you, you There's like, not much jobs out there where you can be your own boss. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you want to decide your own schedule. You want this, you want that. But at the same time, you need money. So that was the challenge because you need to pay bills. You need to survive. Especially out here in L.A., everything's really expensive. Jeez. So, yeah. but I was, hace unos años me invitaba a una compañía de network marketing company. Sure. And, and... I learned a lot of stuff there, man. A lot of stuff. Empecé a escuchar mucho de crecimiento personal. Mucho de, de audiobooks, of self-help books. And back then, I used to work in the airport, throwing bags, you know, making minimum wage. Y, pero yo siempre soñaba, digo, ¿sabes qué? How can I have my own business? How, how can I achieve more? That was my question. Yeah. And I didn't know because, you know, I was, I'm like, you know what? I'm broke. I'm poor. I can't really achieve that. I can't really achieve being a successful person. But once I started learning that, hey, if you start working in your mind, greater things can happen. Mm. Greater things can, you can accomplish things. So little by little, I started believing that, that it was possible. So I empecé a, a, a leer los libros, empecé a acercarme a, a la librería. I wouldn't hang out on Friday nights with my friends. I would, you know, start listening to the audiobooks, to the, to the, YouTube's, and little by little, I started listening to successful stories of people that became from that became from nothing to something, from rags to riches. So little by little, I started believing, like, hey, you know what? Maybe it's possible for me. Maybe one day I can become someone. Maybe one day I can become something. Maybe one day, what if it's possible? And little by little, I started like you know had it in back in my mind, and I said, what if it works? What if it's me? What if? You know, what if it's possible? And I had that. So I started my own little business. I was like around like the age of 30 years old. I used to, I used to be called Paquetero. Pero por qué? Por qué dicen Paquetero? Well, not in a bad way. I was like, hey, yo. Yo llevaba yo comida, perdón, traía comida de México y llevaba yo cosas como de aquí para acá lo que quiera la gente mandarle a sus familiares. Oh, oh, ropa, yeah. lo, ropa sí, sí, zapatos. Sí. Cuando, cada vez que vas va a viajar, sí. hey, do you mind if you drop this off, if you take this, and instead of just having one maleta uh, to check in, it's like <laughs> un chingo, tengo, uh, tres ten, más, por like, favor. Ten more. <laughs> so yo, yo tenía muchos amigos que, que no yeah. podían ir a México. Mm. Tengo muchos amigos, entonces yo dije, oye, yo, yo les llevo tus, tus cosas a tus familiares. Y de allá para acá, ¿qué quieres? Oh, pues mole, quieres pan, tortillas, queso, yo te lo traigo. So, yo hice eso. Y lo hice por muchos años. So, eh, los libros me ayudaron mucho a hacer eso, a cómo aprender mi propio negocio. But you said this was at age what? Like around 30. Estaba yo grande. Yeah. Hasta that, los 30. Yeah, but, pero lo... Creo que that's, that's... And before we even get to the rest, it's, that's a testimony in itself. You're never too late to start something exactly. bigger. Right? Mm -hmm. Whether you're... 18 and right out of high school or in high school or even if you feel like you're middle age 20 30 it, hey it's it's never you're never gonna have the right time until that time itself right and you saying you were 30 while you were doing this before you even 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 this it's just like man believe that believe that at whatever age you feel like oh man i'm too old oh now i'm still too young no you're not bro you're at the right age if that's what you want to do Exactly. Damn, exactly. so, de ahí, ¿no, ¿no te quitaron ninguna mercancía en los aeropuertos ni nada? Siempre, siempre me quitaban. <laughs> tienen esto, tienen me, esto. Llegaba yo ahí, de hecho, una, una cosa curiosa, llegué con un montón de maletas acá a Los Ángeles y traía yo que, que mangos en conserva, supuestamente no los puedes cruzar verdes, solo los, los preparas como en miel y todo eso, y, y ya, you can, es como like, you can slide them in. Pero... Ahí me asustó el migra porque me dijo, hey, ¿sabes qué? Tú traes muchas cosas, vienes seguido. So, si para otra vez te voy a multar y te voy a tirar tus cosas. What the fuck? So, oh, yo no sabía eso. So, gracias a Dios encontré a esta persona que me dijo, Terry, no te vayas directo a Los Ángeles, cruza por Tijuana. Llega a Tijuana y por, 
carro, cruza todas tus cosas. Yo tengo las conexiones y todo. Ok, let's do it. ¿Lo puedes cruzar a mí? <risa> <risa> Comida, nos damos comida nada más. Oh, 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 ¿Me puedes cruzar a mí, güey? Comida, que no cogió a ti. Es porque tenemos un dilema a, a una semana y yo me fui a México a cerrar un, una boda y acá mi compadre no puedo ir. Pero oh. si, si puede ser, y ya sabe. No, puede ir, puede ir cuando Pero quiera. regresar. Porque quiere, o sea, no, quiere, no va porque no quiere. Él puede ir. México lo recibe con los brazos abiertos. No, ya no lo quiere. No, tampoco me quieren allá, güey. ¿Quién sabe si LA lo quiera de regreso? <laughs> That's a different story. Oh, oh yeah. shit. So you started crossing through there. Right. Y también ahí me, 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 me agarraron varias veces porque, come on, I was, I was 30 years old y pues pasaba seguido. Lo, lo, se basan en tu pasaporte. Which time, cada que llegas a México, so, they'll stamp it. Yeah. So, like, hey, you know what? This is not. Porque yo les decía, o oh, es que mi abuelita mandó cosas para mis tíos. Y entonces, ok, like one time te la creen, maybe two times te la creen. Yeah, but, but every two weeks, every month, like, really? Yeah. Like, you're cada gonna mes. Yeah, you're going to ball in there. <laughs> Tiene muchas cosas. Man, so, de, de allí, que, que es el, what's the process? What's the mentality like that, hey, man, this isn't forever. I got to do more. Well, honestly, at that time, I thought I was, I was, I was content back then mm. because I was comparing myself to the people in Mexico. So I, I was comparing myself. I was working maybe three or four days a week, yeah. and the rest of the days I was off. So I was like, hey, you know what? I made it. Yeah. You know, compared to my friends in Mexico, I'm good, you know? I was mm -hmm. drinking a beer in el rancho y todo. Pero cuando me di cuenta, dije... I made it, well, compared to who? My friends in Beverly Hills and Hollywood, I'm broke. Because I still live with my mom in an apartment in East LA. I'm broke. You know, I can't even afford a house. So I thought I was, yeah, I'm my own boss. Yes, I can do whatever I want. But I, don't, I can't even afford a, like a nice place in downtown or in Hollywood. You know, like nothing. I was still. So, when, so it was like a wake-up call because I was comparing myself to my friends in Mexico, which I was... Well, you know, yeah, you know, but here I'm like, hey, I'm broke, I'm still broke, you know. Yeah, you don't have a job, but I'll probably be better off if I had a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but no me quiero adelantar a la, a la historia, pero fue cuando ahí yo tenía una 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 novia, la quería mucho y tuvimos tuvimos un niño y yo pensé que dije, you know what, pues yo estaba contento, estaba emocionado porque, porque por fin iba a ser papá, iba a tener mi familia, iba yo a ser, ¿sabes qué? Yo mentalmente ya me estaba visualizando yendo a, a, a familia, a París de familia, teniendo todo, todo. todo. Mi, mi sueño era, era tener siempre una familia. Para mi desgracia, no fue así. No fue así y, y yo caí en depresión. Yo caí en depresión porque le intenté una cosa, intenté otra, intenté otra y todo, y nada funcionó. Entonces yo dije, ¿qué hago? ¿Qué hago? ¿Qué hago? So, yo dejé de trabajar, dejé de ir a México y no, lo, no, lo, no podía, yo, yo ya no podía, pues. Entonces dije, ¿qué hago? Pero para esto, yo ya había conocido a un amigo ahí en Tijuana. Cuando yo cruzaba las cosas, nos hicimos buenos amigos y me dijo, oye, Terry, no déjate de cosas. Es, ese negocio de llevar y traer paquetería no te va a dejar... Ah, no te voy a dejar nada, o sea, nomás lo estás pasando, estás perdiendo el tiempo. Le dije, muchas gracias, le digo, pero yo tengo, yo tengo sueños de, de crecer mi negocio. Yo le quería mirar como un FedEx mexicano, pues andar allá en todos los pueblitos, yeah, llevando yeah. y trayendo cosas. Uh -huh. Y me dijo, oye, ¿por qué no aprendes la birria? Yo aquí me va muy bien, acá en Tijuana. Yo te enseño cuando tú quieras. Le dije, oye, gracias, le digo, te agradezco, pero pues no me, yo no me gusta cocinar. No me gusta cocinar y qué bueno que te va bien, te aprecio como amigo, pero... Eso no es lo mío. You didn't like cooking. Ah, yo, no, yo no me gusta cocinar. No me gusta y no sé cocinar. <risa> Entonces, ¿quién nos cocinó los tacos? <risa> ¿Qué haces esos putos tacos? <risa> ah, por eso sabían buenos los tacos. Eh. <risa> hey, sé, I know there's guys out there that love cooking. Sé que hay gente, hombres que, con mi compadre Miguel, saludos. He gets down with the grill. Sí. 
No, mi guys, yo, ¿qué quieres de comer? Ahorita te ordeno, güey. Ahorita vamos a comprar acá y allá, Uber Eats. Igual yo, igual yo. Igual yo, igual yo. Man, so, de ahí dije, nah, this is... No, yo, yo le decía, yo, ¿sabes qué? Gracias por la invitación, gracias yeah. por la oferta, pero eso no es para mí. Yeah. Qué bueno que te va bien a ti y eres muy exitoso acá en tu negocio, acá en Tijuana. Yeah. But long story short, you know what, yo caigo en depresión. Y... y yo digo, ¿qué hago ahora? You know, aquí ya no tenía yo dinero, ya nadie me quería ver en mi casa, no estaba trabajando, yo estaba yo acostado nada más. Empecé a tomar, o sea, estaba tomando mucha cerveza. Mi mamá me dijo, ¿sabes qué? Aquí no puedes estar, si no vete para México con tu papá. Y yo dije, ¿cómo voy a ir a México? A, a Puebla, no tenía dinero, no tenía nada. ¿Y ¿Cómo voy a llegar fracasado, así como con la cola entre las patas? Mm. Y no, dije, no puedo irme para Puebla. Le digo, ¿a dónde me voy? O sea, no he tenido nadie. O sea, y me, ah, pues me voy para Tijuana. Con este compa que me, enseñó, que me dijo de la birria. Pues allá me voy, allá ando con él nomás, ahí para pues, plantar el tiempo mientras a ver qué. Figure it out. Yeah, I'll figure it out later. Y, ahí, y le, le marqué, le dije, oye, ¿estás en serio de, de, de enseñarme ahí a cocinar? Sí, dice, vente, cállale cuando quieras. Ok, voy para allá. Y agarré un Lero Gio que tenía un 97 <coughs> y me fui para allá. Sí. Me fui para allá y, y, y pues todo avergonzado porque pues dormí yo y pues me dio chance de dormir en la sala. Su, su esposa y todo, pues, se quedó así como que, ¿quién es este, ¿Quién yeah. es este compa? Porque tenía niño chiquito, yo me sentía penado también, pero también no tenía dinero. Algo que yo, eh, un rato también fue muy difícil, levantarme temprano, ya me, me levantaron a las 4 de la mañana, hace la birria, ahí a, a cargar la camioneta para, para llevarla al puesto. Eso para mí era, ah, oh, you know, like, the, big, the hardest thing waking up at 4 in the morning. You know, y para yo trabajar, andaba como todos los días crudo, desvelado. Pero dije, pues, ¿sabes qué? Ni modos. Y él siempre me decía, Teddy, agarra la onda, aliviánate, aliviánate. Y yo como que, ah, no, ok, you know, no, no, quiero cerveza, quiero, quiero seguir tomando yo. You're depressed. Yeah, I was depressed. Yeah. No me importaba. Dice, hey, hazle así, así, mira, así, hazle la birria, así. I don't care, dame una cerveza mejor. So, pasó el tiempo, pasó el tiempo. Y yo dije, oye, ¿qué tal si esto funciona? Y yo empecé a pensar, oh, what if this thing works? What if this thing works? Porque miraba, pues, you know, es fácil, es fácil hacerlo, es fácil el negocio. Y dije, ¿sabes qué? Me voy a para Los Ángeles. Le, le, le marqué a mi mamá, me vine para Los Ángeles. Y, y pues fue difícil regresar porque venir sin dinero, venir sin nada, porque pues allá no, les, no, no estaba trabajando, pues. O sea, de cuenta un año sin, sin nada. Yeah. Más de 30 años, el mayor de, de cuatro hermanos, mis hermanas... Me miraban a mí como que, you're a loser. Like, hey, come on, we should be looking up to you. Mm -hmm. you're a lo like, you have nothing. Yeah. You know, like, you're, you're borrowing gas money. You're borrowing my car. And it was embarrassing. It was, it was, it was, it was hard. Because like, I wasn't trying to become that person, right? But it happened. So, I used to, you know, we live in East LA. So I walked to church. I would, I would walk to church just to, I, I was trying to heal myself. And I would go to church, and then I got involved in the um, grupo de jóvenes at night, and, you know, like, started going to a, un retiro. And little by little, it, it started, it started um, helping me because I had, like, anger towards my ex. So I had anger, I had anger towards, towards my dad that had left us. So I was ang angry at myself. So, conocí a una monjita y me dijo, perdona, mírate al espejo y perdónate. So, that was hard, you know, perdonarse, o sea, por tus errores. Porque I was walking, I was going through life feeling like a miserable person, feeling like a failure. Because, you know, you're more, over 30 years old, con papeles, con todo el potencial, sabiendo inglés, sabiendo trabajar, y andaba peor que, que o sea, estaba yo muy mal, pero gracias a Dios que me acerqué a Dios y empecé a sanar mis heridas, empecé a perdonar y poco a poquito como empecé a liberar todo eso y, y dije, ¿sabes qué Dios mío? ¿Qué quieres de mí? ¿Qué quieres? ¿Qué quieres? Um, ¿Estoy listo para empezar de nuevo? Y dije, ok, pues tengo esta receta que me enseñaron, le voy a dar todo lo que sé, o sea, le voy a poner todo, o sea, si, si a mí no me gusta cocinar, pero si esto me, es lo que tengo que hacer, 
I'm going to make the best beer ever. I'm going to make the best. And, and I saw myself and I proclaimed it. I started listening to the Love Attraction, the others, um, like um, The Secret and, and What If It's Possible. And I got excited of it. You know, y todos me miraban como que está loco si no tiene dinero, ¿cómo? Ponte a trabajar. Yeah. Le dije, convencí a mi mamá, digo, ma, agárreme un carro, agárreme un carro, uh, sign for me. Quiero, quiero empezar a manejar Uber. No, que estás loco, agárreme, ponte a trabajar, ponte a trabajar. Digo, no, 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 ocupo, ocupo un carro, ocupo un carro. Yeah. So, me pongo, me agarro el carro, me pongo a manejar Uber y ando pues como, pues loco, pues me entiendo. En ese entonces, no sé, ahorita, pero creo que después de 12 o 14 horas, la aplicación te para y dice, you need to go take a break. Oh, shit. Sí, porque... It's like, the, it's like the truck drivers where you reach your limit. I believe so. Yeah, like you reach your limit and you gotta... Yeah. You gotta take a break and shit, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's a, I was watching that and the interview that you had and you were driving Uber, but you had started your birria and your car was smelling like birria. Yes. So, I was driving... Around, for, like, I was driving, trying to make some money. So, little by little, empecé a comprar mi licuadora, mi ollita, y todas las cosas que ocupaba. You're just stacking up. Yes. So, debía mucho dinero. So, empecé a pagarle a toda la gente que le debía. Y empecé a cocinar la birria en la casa. Y, y empecé a dar pruebas gratis a la gente. So, this is before COVID. Yeah. This is... That, right now, if you do that, probably you're weird. You know, probably <laughs> weird. They'd be like, this um, <laughs> no, sir. Yeah. Stop that. Where did that come from? <laughs> yeah, back then, people weren't that delicate or so sensitive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, ponía la birria ahí en la, cam en, en la cajuela del carro, y la gente me preguntaba, hey, what's the smell? It smells good. I'll be like, hey, I'm glad you asked. Give me one second. I'll pull over. Sacaba yo la, la, una tostadita y le daba yo la prueba gratis. Oh wow, this is pretty cool. This is delicious. Do you have a food truck? Do you have a restaurant? I'm like, no, I have none of that stuff. But you know what? Uh, you know what? Let me get you my my my. I think I gave my phone number back then. Or can I get your phone number? I I intercambied the number para que as soon as I open my 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 taco stand, I'll give you a call. So I was trying to recruit people. So when I opened my taco stand, I was like ready. You know, I was... Yeah. You were doing the work step, before yeah, the work. Exactly. One well, step ahead. Yeah, you should have picked us up an Uber fucking after a club right there. <laughs> no, no chingamos toda la vida que está atrás. No, güey, no, dame toda la olla. Saca. <laughs> sí, y ya luego me acuerdo que esto fue en octubre del 2016. Conocí esta, esta, esta persona, se llama María. Ella me echó la mano ahí en Los Ángeles y me dijo, Teddy, tu vida está bien buena, ponte a vender acá en, acá en mi fábrica. Digo, pero ¿cómo? Yo nunca he vendido birria, no sé nada, solamente la sé hacer, pero no sé ni hacer un taco yo, porque en Tijuana yo no hacía taco, yo sí volteaba las tortillas nada más. Entonces, yeah. so, no, pues no sé qué gran cosa es hacer una olla y todo. Digo, ok. So, puse la, puse la olla y agarré todo, y, y ahí con sus trabajadores, tenía 60 trabajadores. Yo dije, con estos 60 trabajadores la voy a hacer. Nada. Toda la gente que ella tenía no, 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 me, no, no quisieron comprarme a mí. So yo dije, Damn. mi mamá estaba conmigo y me dijo, qué mala onda, nadie nos quiso comprar tacos. Y en ese entonces me dio coraje, ¿ves? Pero fue lo que yo ocupábamos para salirnos de nuestra comfort zone. Porque dije, si eso no nos compran, ok, ¿cómo le puedo hacer entonces? Porque yo estaba pensando, digo, que son 60 trabajadores, tengo 5... Tengo uh, los platos, pues puse un especial de cinco dólares. Tres taquitos y un calito por cinco dólares. Digo, si te los vendo cinco, espe I mean, un especial a cada persona, son 300 dólares. Para mí, I was like, wow, para mí, yeah. that's worth it. Yeah, making it. Pero no fue así. So, nadie, nadie llegó a comprar. Y dije, ¿ahora qué hacemos? This is what, 2016. October 2016. Damn. ¿Qué hago, qué hago? Ok, ni modos, guardamos to todas las cosas a la cajuela y otra vez a, a vender, a manejar. Y otra vez la gente me preguntaba, hey, what's that smell in the car? What's that smell in the car? Hey, I'm glad you asked. Hey, I'm actually selling tacos on, on this location. Come visit me. Y poco a poquito empecé a invitar gente, empecé a invitar gente. On Facebook, I would spam people, I would tag people. On my phone, les mandaba yo un video, dipping the taco. Metí el taco, no tenía nada que hacer, no había gente. So, tuve que usar mi imaginación. 
para, para atraer gente. Yeah. So, me mojaba el taco o mojaba la tortilla ¿no? y hacía todo esto. Yeah. Y se los mandaba a todos mis contactos en, en, en Facebook, en WhatsApp, en, en todo eso. Y poco a poquito la gente empezó a llegar. Yeah. Empezó a llegar, empezó a llegar, empezó a llegar. So, así fueron los inicios con Sheesh. The Chase for Tacos. So, what, do you remember these days and these dates? Like it was yesterday. <coughs> One one thing I did, one thing I did want to ask is, what got you out of depression? What got you out of this hole that you were once in? That I feel like, and we've said it before. When and I actually said this yesterday, like man, when we're in, when we're in a depressive state, as much as people need help, at the end of the day, sometimes no one can save us. The only person that could ever save you is you. Right. So what what did you do? To get out of this depressive state. Well, well, there were a couple of things. Um, first of all, pues me fui para México. Allá eso fue que me ayudó, me me despejé mucho. Me 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 puse ahí a ayudarle a mi amigo en la birria. Y poco a poquito yo sabía que que Dios tenía un, un propósito más grande para mí. So, yo, cuando tú crees en eso que tienes un propósito más grande que puedes lograr cosas más grandes, más bonitas, hacer algo, yo siento que no tienes que rendir, también tú tienes que, que buscar la ayuda. Yo me acerqué a la iglesia también, busqué ayuda, tenía mucho coraje que estaba arrastrando por 30 años, eso perdoné, perdoné mucho a las personas que, que, que yo sentí que me habían lastimado. So cuando tú perdonas, es como, tienes, estás purificado, estás, ok, ¿qué más puedo hacer? ¿Qué más puedo hacer? Ok, me fue mal en eso, no tengo dinero. Ok, pero ¿qué sí tengo? Ok, puedo dar las gracias, puedo ser amable, puedo sonreír, puedo hacer esto. Tengo una receta, ok, vamos a, a cocinar. Oiga, ¿le gusta esto? Pruébelo, pruébelo. Y eso mismo te va dando más motivación. Eso mismo te va sacando de la depresión. Tú queriendo salir, ¿sabes qué? Ok, eso fue mi pasado. Ahora soy una persona nueva, voy a empezar de nuevo. Voy a empezar con más fuerzas, con más ilusión, con más ganas. Y, y tú mismo tienes que también motivarte, decir, oh, es que, es, es que no podemos hacer excusas. Yeah. If you want things bad enough, you have to work bad enough. You know, if you, you, know, you can either make money or make excuses, but you can't make both. So, so right now, it's like, it's like it's, we live in tough times, but you need to become tough as well because, because hard is not, I mean, life's not easy. But if you choose to complain, to whine, to be E-A-C-H, It's, it's, you know, you, you can't get ahead in life right now, you know. So, but if you choose to be positive, you choose to be grateful, you choose to go that extra mile, great things can happen. And, and that's possible. Damn. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> as much as sometimes I would want to rush the process because I want to get point, to point B from point A, then I would, for, I would not remember what I learned through to the darkness, which is the lonely nights, the long nights, the days where this shit wasn't promised. You know what I mean? So, like, one thing, one thing that stands out, and I, I cannot let this go over people's head, is this was already, you're over the age of 30, and you're figuring yourself out. You're building a business. People didn't come to you. You want to go get people to come to your stand. So, when they came to idea to move it to the, Train tracks, railroad. What's your idea? How does how does it go from not nobody coming to your stand and only selling, giving giving food out to hey, I'm gonna go open a, a stand here. Well, I think the biggest challenge, and it goes back to this is my example. Well, I started with food, right? But going back to whatever you, you guys have going on, podcast or personal, whatever you have going on, it's a, it's about a mindset. Mm -hmm. What's your mindset? What are you telling yourself? At the end of the night, what are you telling yourself? Are you telling yourself, hey, I'm a loser. Hey, I'm not tall enough. I'm not young enough. I'm not old enough. I'm not rich enough. What are you telling yourself? Those, those conversations is the thing that makes a difference. Whatever you tell yourself at night. Oh, yeah, my dad was right. Oh, my mom told me she, I, I should have gotten a job. Yeah, you know what? My friend's telling me I'm crazy for believing in that. And it, but if you believe that, That's what's gonna mess it mess it up. It stops you. Yeah. It's not the self 
the self doubt that you put in your head because of what everybody else is telling you and what everybody else is thinking and what society believes is right, then of course, then we wouldn't even fucking be here. Like, people, one of the questions that you know you guys ask, and I'm glad you guys ask, is, um, what does it take to make your brand famous, to make it popping, right? So it was. <laughs> To say it in the correct context that, that they had said, how how do you make something out of nothing? Like an example, make your brand famous. And the way I take that question is, why are you starting it for? What's the first reason? What's the purpose behind it? And then stop thinking about short term. Think about longevity. Exactly. Think about Week after week, month after month, year after year, what is your plan with whatever you're doing? If you're thinking about it in the short term, well, you may not, it may not pay off in that short term because people say business-wise, this is the business owner here. Sometimes they say the first year doesn't work out. Sometimes they say the second year doesn't work out. But the third, fourth, fifth, it may be there. But how do you know that until you get to that fucking point? You don't even know, right? So... To kind of just like just before we get into the rest is is the opening in the train tracks and having all these people there. So kind of sort of a fast forward, right? But from having nobody to now having people coming to eat at your stand, what's the feeling like? What's the emotion like? Well, I think going even be behind that, we have to go back. It's not like it was a miracle if people started showing up. People Ooh. didn't show up just because, oh, it's Teddy's Red Tacos. Teddy's what? Who's Teddy? Yeah. You know, I started off in Sl- on Slauson. Slauson is one of the major, you know, some people in, in, in L.A., so in South yeah. Central. You know, that's a like main street for tacos. So I was competing against the big, you know, the big people that have been in business for 10, 20, 30 years. Yeah. And I'm Teddy's Red Tacos. And they're like, who the, who the fuck is this, is this? this yeah. guy? You know, like, because I didn't call myself Birria. Birria Teddy, so Birria Vasquez. No, I want, from the name, I wanted to be different, right? So, I don't know nothing about branding. I don't know nothing about marketing. I have no study, as you can tell the way, the way I speak. <laughs> I have no studies. You know, I used to, you know, I traía chiles a Mexico. So, so <laughs> that's going to tell you a lot about me, right? Yeah. So, you know, tengo experiencia de, 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 de Instagram, de, de, de nada de eso, de ventas. But what I learned is, if you want to stand out from the crowd, you have to go the extra mile, as long as possible. Theodore Roosevelt said, wherever you are, do the best with whatever you have. So I said, what do I have? Okay, I can smile. I go back to the same principles that we, that, that we, uh, that we got taught in, in kindergarten. Be polite. Say, you know, saludar, dar las gracias. And those are the basic things that people take for granted nowadays. You know, it's smiling. Yeah. Hola, hola, jefe. Buenas tardes, bienvenido. Está? Muchas gracias por venir. Buenas tardes, bienvenido. Muchas gracias por venir. Yeah. It doesn't take that much. And I will go to other food trucks, other restaurants, and nothing, nothing, nothing would, would stand out to me. Yeah. What if I do this? What if I just go the extra mile? Y, y empecé a hacer eso. I would treat my customers like a million dollar customer. Miraba una persona que se acercara a mí. Hi, welcome to Teddy's. Bienvenido a Teddy's, jefe. I would literally want it to hang up y que viniera. <laughs> y no, y es la verdad. <laughs> es la verdad porque I was so broke. So like, hey, venga, venga, venga. Venga. Es más, venga, yo le invito los tacos. Hágame compañía. Hágame plática porque estoy aburrido aquí. Yeah. No, llegaba la, no llegaba gente, pues. Pero, going back again to the question, I, went, I was in a taco stand on the weekends and driving during the week for Uber. So, how do you go from selling tacos on a taco stand on the weekends to having your first food truck? Yeah. With no money, I'm broke, no credit, because you know, I, did, I had this, all this past. So how do you do that? In the meantime, while I was listening to, while I was driving over, I was listening to other classics 
and motivation. I had my earpiece. I was playing the radio for my my passengers, but on my on my ear, I was listening. Hey, it's possible. Don't give up. Keep trying. It's possible. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Keep trying. Keep trying. It's possible. You can you can make it happen. Believe. Believe. Achieve. All those things. So it went from my mind to my subconscious mind. So I started seeing myself successful. I started seeing myself helping others. I started, I started pro- proclaiming yeah. that I had this, all this big stuff. Yeah. And little by little, it started happening. You so, oh, go ahead. Now you believe it, you can achieve it. Yeah. And I literally did. Yeah. I literally, I, I, got, I, I, me engañé, me engañé por tanto tiempo. Hey, what if it's possible? ¿Qué tal si, si me puedo ser famoso? ¿Qué tal si me puedo ser esto? ¿Qué tal si sí? ¿Qué tal si sí? Cuando alguien me decía, oh, es que, ¿qué tal si no, Teddy? Yo decía, ¿qué tal si sí? ¿Qué tal si sí puedo hacer esto? ¿Qué tal si puedo comprar mi lonchera? ¿Qué tal si sí puedes crecer tu podcast a, a, a más estados? ¿Qué tal si sí? ¿Qué tal si sí puedes lograr esa meta? Pero, ¿qué tan uh, dispuesto estás a trabajar para eso? How long? What are you willing to give up in return for that? Yeah, that's, that's, that, that's, the, uh, that's, the, that's the main thing, bro. And I piggyback off what you said. Is your biggest enemy is yourself, bro. And if you limit yourself to, I don't have studies. I don't have a car. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make tacos. You're putting yourself a limit. So the thing you did was, I don't give a fuck about the limits, you know? Was, I'm going to make my own limits. Yeah. And that's going to be up there once I'm up there. It's because at one point, like, you got to stop giving a fuck about what everybody says. Pretty right? much. Like, yeah. I, we've, we've had this conversation within ourselves, and then I had this yesterday. It's like, man, are you going to be the best parent? Shit. Maybe not to other people's eyes. Are you going to be the best taco maker? Maybe not to other people's eyes. Are you going to be the best podcast? Whatever you're going to try to be, you may not be the best for everybody, but you may be the best. You. But until you start giving a fuck about what other people think, whatever other people have to say about you that judge you to put you down and to stop you from doing something big, then that becomes it's like you become a whole different monster. The moment you realize that you other people don't have no control over how you feel about yourself, then nobody wants that person because that person is untouchable. Sure. And that's who we are. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, do I feel sometimes like before this even grew to most of this, did I feel like this wasn't going over? Fuck yeah, dude. 10 listens, 50 listens. No one watching. No one sharing. And I was like, man, is this really what I want to be doing? And then even coming the first weekend of LA, all prepped up. Hell yeah, we in LA now. Da, da, da. Damn, 100 views. I didn't know that. Like, yeah. What are we doing? But you know what? You know what's the key? You kept on doing it. Continue. You kept on doing it. You kept on doing it. You kept on doing it. You kept, you kept, you kept until. Yeah. Until. So nowadays, people want easy. Correct. There's no, you know, like there's, oh, like, oh, oh, it's trendy. It's cool. Okay, cool. Like cool don't last. Trendy don't last. Yeah. So you have to have your your mindset right in, in, in order, you know, to. to yeah, because it. It, you can you can give us right now la receta to make the best red taco, the best birria. But at the end of the day, if we don't have the fucking grind within ourselves. It's not going to be That good. shit ain't going to go nowhere. Because people think like, oh, if you give me the receipt right now, the me- how you did this right now, give me the secret to this. Ah, it's going to pay off and even more because I know I already have it all. Mm-hmm. But what people don't forget is what they're really missing is that grind inside, that fire inside, that it's going to, when it doesn't work out, what else do you got left? What else are you willing to give up? What else are you willing to give? Well, motherfucker, I'm here. I'm willing to give anything impossible. An arm and a leg if I need to, to get there. And, and sometimes we need that. You know, necesitamos ese coraje. Yo recuerdo que preguntaron una vez, oye, si el Teddy, ¿qué, qué ha sido de ese güey? Oh, pues allá anda el pobre. Ahora vende tacos el güey. Pero una palabra, pero dice, oh, ya anda valiendo madres. Así dijeron. Sí. Cuando estaba en puestecito. You know, y pues sí, andaba yo aparente. Bueno, well, sí, no tenía dinero. Vivíamos en un apartment. Yo vivía con mi mamá. Más de 30 años viviendo ahí en East LA. So, con mis little brothers. Pues quizás sí andaba yo en esa situación. Yeah. Pero eso fue también algo que dijo, ok. So, ¿Con qué ando valiendo madres? All right. I'll show you qué ando valiendo madres. So, right. Eso me dio más juego. Yeah. So, ese tiempo de, de hasta ahorita, si tú me preguntas de clubs, de, 
de viajes, yo no te conozco, Klaus. Yo no te conozco restaurants. Yo no te conozco qué anda haciendo fulanito, fulanito. Yo estoy I'm, I'm focused on my, on, on my, on my lane. Yeah. So, so, yo, yo no ando ahorita, oh, que anoche fui clubbing o fui party. No, yo ando trabajando. I'm working on myself. I'm okay. working on my business. Okay, but why is that? So right now you said you have 11 locations? Yes. 11 locations. Why is it that you still haven't given yourself those, the that moment, or that, yeah, that reward the, of. The recognition of, like, I have 11 locations out in L.A. Yeah, I have, like, I have people working for me. I have a chain of restaurants, not just <clears> one. <throat> I have 11. Why don't you just say, like, ah, I could take a break. I could, I could take off for a little bit. Well, yeah, I'm not there, like, no ando trabajando así como. O sea, como cuando empecé. O sea, ahora el trabajo ya no es tanto físico, sí. ahora más es mental. Sí. Es mucho estrés lidiar con más de 100 trabajadores, las locaciones, las rentas, todo. Es un estrés muy grande. O sea, es muy, mucha responsabilidad. O sea, de mí dependen muchas familias. Yeah. De este negocio dependen muchas familias. Pero por eso yo tengo que estar concentrado en lo que estamos haciendo. Porque así como es, de, um, no nomás, el reto no nomás es subir. El, el reto más grande es mantenerse arriba. O sea, es fácil ahorita poner un negocio, y, oh, ¿cómo? pero ¿cuánta competencia no hay? Ahorita cuando nosotros salimos en el Super Bowl y todo, ¿cuánta gente no vende birria? Todos venden birria. Pollo Loco vende birria. ¿Me entiendes? Sin embargo, nosotros seguimos vendiendo lo mismo, el mismo producto cuando empezamos. ¿Eso qué quiere decir eso? Quiere decir que quizás tenemos algo bueno. O sea, ten, uh, otro, otros lugares, otras loncheras, otros restaurantes lo están vendiendo porque, oh, es trendy, la birria está de moda. Vamos a, a vender birria. Vamos a cambiar nuestro menú a birria. Está bien. Todo se vale. Pero nosotros seguimos ahí. Entonces, yo tengo que estar enfocado porque yo tengo una re, gran responsabilidad. O sea, no porque, oh, pues yo soy el jefe. Pues ahí nos vemos y yo ando paseando por el mundo. Siento que no estoy en el lugar todavía para hacer eso todavía. Eh. O sea, tengo una gran responsabilidad. Así como me costó llegar. Tengo, ahorita, pues, mis trabajos, tengo que trabajar más... Más todavía, más inteligente, porque donde vamos a llevar el negocio ahorita es todavía, like, okay, it's cute what we did, but where we're heading, it's even better. You said it's cute what we did? Yeah. Ooh. What the f Like, it, it was not even... <laughs> what? 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 No, no, okay, I, so... No, no, he, you said it right. Yeah, yeah, con yeah, toda humildad, right. o sea, no, no quiero no, ofender no. ni nada. Pero, o sea, no, no, no. Pero yeah. esa, es, esa es la cosa, que tienes... Estás haciendo tanto, tienes locación, no nomás una, dos, tres, que para abrir todavía una es, me imagino que it's, it's so much that goes into it, right? But, like, that's cute. I take that as how, oh, we did that? That's cool. But look at where we're going. Exactly. Hey, And we that's did. what we, we have to see ourselves. Yeah. Uh, that was cute. Yeah, I opened, uh, uh, okay, a restaurant by the beach, a restaurant with a drive through Okay, 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 that's cute, but okay, what if we can open one in each airport? A Teddy's in each airport, in each location, each city. You know, why not? Well, <laughs> you know, why Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Other people have done it, why not me? So to yeah. open for, and there's people that, how you said, that have taco <coughs> spots, that know how to cook, that some of them get complacent of having a good popular taco taco stand, But how we see now, por causas ajenas, they kick out taco vendors. They, they, los multan. They do this, they do that, they do this, they do that. What is that, that difference maker from having the taco stand that you had into having a location, a firm location? And what's the mentality that needs to happen? That's a good question. When I had a taco stand, you know, I was doing, let's say, quote-unquote, illegally, because I know I shouldn't be selling tacos on the street. Yeah. I know I shouldn't be, you know, I have all this. That's why you have to get a restaurant or a food truck or a restaurant, pay your permits, get a health department. So, so you, you're complying with the law. But I know I, I had to do it in the meantime. It was just a stepping stone. It wasn't a bed to lay down in. It was just a stepping stone. I did that for nine months. So for nine months, okay, yo sé que ahorita no, no estoy pagando taxes, ahorré mi dinero. Nueve meses más tarde, en julio 2017, we first purchased our first food truck and we put it in the, in, in, in the railroad. So you know what? Okay, it's time to move on from working illegally to now let's, start, let's try to start working legal, more, more, more legal. 
paying our taxes, paying our dues, and take it to the next level. And that that's more of like a like a, a more safer, right? Like they can't kick you out if they wanted to because no. you're you're paying when he's. Well, they paid. tried to kick me a whole yeah. bunch of times. You're, you're paying Uncle Sam, which is the obviously the the one that everybody's like, oh, you're not doing that, whatever the case is. So as long as Uncle Sam gets his, his cut, he's we're happy. Good. We're good. We're, yeah. Everybody's happy. Good. happy. Okay, so why not stop at the at the at the truck? Why not that? That's good, bro. You you went from nothing to having something. literally broke to having something, something to having a little bit more. You're good. Ya estás bien. Like, estás vendiendo. Well, good. Troca. Like, well, good is the enemy of great. Ooh. <laughs> so it's like. Yo, damn. Damn. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sheesh. Don't let that shit go over anybody's head. Yeah, that one hit hard, yeah. bro. Again, like, you had more than you even had in the last 30 years. Yeah, I had a food truck and I was making crazy money. And I'm like, okay, it's cute. But I wasn't giving my, fir- my, my, my full potential. You know, then I got the, fir- the, excuse me, the second food truck. Then we opened the restaurant in Venice. So we, we had three locations, right? And pandemic hit. Mm-hmm. And I thought I was doing my, my, my best. Realistically, I was maybe giving my 30% of my capacity. So it was crazy when pandemic hit. On 2020, it was a wake up call for me, because I mean, I mean, mom le dio COVID. Shoot, see, I mean, mom le dio COVID. Like, I'm, I need to take care. You know, I was trying to watch out for my mom. Yeah. So when I got caught, co- me mom had got COVID on me, which is good because it would have been, I would have felt bad if, if I was. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, which is good. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, hell yeah. Because it would have been me to her. Like, yeah, yeah. It would have been kind of bad. But when I was sitting in bed for like a week, I, was start, I started thinking, what if I die right now? What if I die? And the next question I asked myself, Teddy, did you really give it your best? Realistically, Teddy, did you really give it your best? I said, no. Well, if I get a second chance, I'm going to give it my best. Mm. And, you know, a couple weeks later, boom, okay, you know what? Teddy 2.0 came back. Okay, okay. Vamos a darle. Come on, come on. No more party. No more. Let's, let, let's focus. Let's, let's, let's get serious about this. And like the, like the law of attraction says, you know, you, you, you attract what you manifest. I got connected with this, my real estate agent. And we started um, finding spots, man. People were closing down spots on pandemic. Yeah. And long story short, we went from three locations then July 2020, from three locations to 11 locations, December 2021. Sheesh. So we opened eight locations in 18 months. I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I was losing my fucking head throughout the don't process. Do don't, do but don't do that. Um, it's crazy. It's it, crazy. In what store or what location did you sit back and be like, damn, I'm doing something. From nothing to something. Well, I could say my, my baby is uh, the original one, the one in Slauson, my food truck. Ooh. My food truck, yeah, in the railroads. That's my baby there. We still keep the original food truck. We still keep it. You never sold it? He's like, that's my baby. I'm that's not saying that. If someone offers you... Oh, no, 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 no. No? <laughs> no, no, no. No, it's not for sale. It's not for sale. What does that mean to you? What does that food truck mean to you? Oh, that's everybody that started. It's, that's our baby there. That's our baby. We had to push the truck. We had so many stories because the truck, it's all beat up. And it still is beat up because I want to keep it as original as when we started. I have other ni- nice trucks, newer trucks. They're black with the logo and stuff, but that truck it's white. You you see it and like what? This is the Teddy's truck. This is the one that came in the Super Bowl. This is the one that came out on Netflix. This is the one that came on the commercials. I'm like what? Really? But that's that's the one. Talk. You know, that's the heavy, one. Heavy, bro. So, <laughs> so, so it's pretty much so you don't forget where you're coming from. Mm. And we did the logos 
all the logos have the 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 truck, the white truck, in the food truck. Meaning, we have the original truck in, in the new trucks. So thanks to that white truck, all the new the new food trucks in restaurants are there because of that truck. Yeah. So that's crazy. It no. It takes a certain type of persona, man. It takes a certain type of dog. It takes a certain type of fucking mentality bro. mentality to fucking get you out of not just a depressed state, but a broke state. They people say that when you're broke, you, you scavenge it for whatever else is left. And you have two choices. Either make something out of it or just put your hands up and give up. And everybody, nine times out of ten, eight times out of ten, they put their hands up. Because it's the easiest things to do. Give yeah, up. It's easy. Give up, quitting, going back. That's easy. Yeah. But if you're willing, willing to do something, accomplish something, it's like, okay, what are you willing to give? What are you willing to sacrifice? Yeah. Are you willing to sit down and, and read a book of Thinking Go Rich by Napoleon Hill? He, he took 25 years to interview the most successful people in the United States. 25 years. And he wrote a book. And there's people that that won't take their time to be, hey, well, how did these people, all the Rockefellers, all the, 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 the Fords, how did they make it happen? What kind of mindset they had? We have to read it. People, the, the path has been, it's there. We just have to go out and read and take our time. Yeah. Today's, nowadays, it's so easy to get distracted with social media, with TikToks, with, with funny videos, with funny memes. But if you go back to basics and, and, and work on yourself, and even YouTube, I listen to YouTube a lot, a, a, a lot, yeah. and, and work on my mind, and, and I still keep believing. Okay, it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. Yeah, because it, there's there's so much more, right? Like, like me and Dylan, we've been in the gym. Like, we've had a. So excuse me. There's moments like we finish work, or we've we've had a long day, and it's just like one of the easiest and and funniest ah. choices is, do we go home chill or do we go to the do straight to the, to the gym? gym. Well, I'm tired. And there was one time I told him, and he was, I was like, hey, what do you, what are you doing right now? I think I'm just going gonna, gonna to chill. I'm like, okay, cool. Stay quiet. I was like, I'm going to let him make a choice. And he was like, what are you about to do? And I was like, well, I'm tired, bro, but I'm going to the gym. All right, all right. And I'm down, I'm down. I was like, no, no, no. You got to make that choice. And then when we got into the gym, I was like, look, fool. No one's going to push us but us. No one's going to push you harder than yourself. And until you find people that want to, to thrive for something bigger, then you'll have someone that will push you. As much as I'm tired, as much as he's tired, it's like, yo, like, hey, we got to go. Like, the other day, we're in the gym, and I'm fucking just ah, tired. And then he's like, I feel good, bro. For like, once. Hell yeah. Bro, like, for once in like I feel really good today. Freaking years. That's amazing. Like, All right, hell yeah, let, let's run it. But even like there's there's people here that when we even isolate, no one hears from us. And then we come back and we're like, I've been working on me, bro. I've been working on myself because why? I needed time for me and I needed time to to regroup myself because I was getting lost in in what life was. And how you said earlier, life is hard. No matter what way you look at it, no matter what you're thinking of doing, life is gonna throw stuff at, at you that's gonna knock you down, put you down. And it's up to you to either maneuver around it, either figure it out, or give up. Right, right. It's easy. Right. Easiest thing is just to put your hands up. It is what it is. I'm done. It's like, man, is that really an option? It is. But is that my option? Right, right. I don't think so. No, no, no. We, we've, we're getting into two years into this. You're how many years now into your business? Officially from July 2017. Five years. Five, yeah. Four. Six years. Six? So in, Ju in July, it's going to be six years. Yeah, six years. Six years in July. See, <coughs> you're six years. We're going two, going on three. And what I tell people is like, uh, someone in the, in the sauna actually told me, it's like, oh, that's good, man. You, you, you never give, you're not giving up. You know, this is a time where people give up. Oh, yeah. I'm like, that was never in our language. That was never in, that was never in, in our line of, of sentences that we wrote to ourselves. I was like, because if I did that, if I put give up, 
how am I going to start this? I've done other things that I gave up in a couple months or in a month. I'm like, it didn't mean nothing. But now it's like how you said, the truck is your baby. This is our baby. This is what I, I want to grow. This is what, no matter what happens, anybody says, I'm going to do this to the furthest I can until I fucking stop breathing. Why? Because I know where this could go and then some. Right. And, and a lot of people, and, I, and we tell other people, Find something, whatever you love to do, content, food, you know, construction, yard, whatever it is, find something. And then when someone tries to rip it away from you, what are you going to do from it? Are you going to give it up or are you going to fight for it until you're just the only one fighting for it left, right? Mm -hmm. I, I wish we would have recorded it, but shout out my guy right here, Teddy. He said, vamos a darles de comer porque no, no han comido en una semana. Me miró, me miró <laughs> muerto pobres. de hambre. He's like, fuck. Dijo, pinches pobres, no han comido. Pinches <laughs> pobres. No, no, no. ¿Ya comieron no, pobres? No, <laughs> ¿Ya comieron pobres? No, los miré medios crudos. <laughs> hey, look. No, estoy a pedo, está yo todo a pedo. <laughs> yeah. No, re regresamos, creo que regresé de México el, el lunes. Lunes en la noche. Pero even over there, like, it, it, no es cosa... Así, vamos a decir que era gourmet food. No, le carne su jugo y nomás puse, ya comieron pobres. <laughs> I saw they're, it. <laughs> they're just like, oh my God, that looks so bomb. And I was like, hey, like, it is bomb, right? It is bomb. But it was my first time actually trying Teddy's tacos. <sighs> that one's all. Ahora, ahora sí, pues. Venice yeah. it is. Let's go to Venice. There's no ever tell us we get to eat for free because why do Ah, say no. Señor, me dan unos 10 tacos <laughs> para aquí, 10 para llevar. Consomé para aquí y otro para llevar. He's going to send us a message. Hey, uh, I think the bill was... Uh, <laughs> have you seen... Uh, what's, that, what's the movie? Uh, remember the Titans when they're winning? They're like, Titans eat for free here. And then a week later, <laughs> Titans eat here. <laughs> 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 All right, so there's... Man, me and Dylan are learning a lot right now. Yes, sir. And yes, we are. I, I think one thing that, that is really standing out to me and that I love to hear about this is that you are Mexican-American, Latino, Hispanic, whatever anybody wants to say. You went from having literally nothing to doing the work internally to build something that was that everybody thought you were crazy for. No va a ser nada. Oh, that shit's going to die out. Oh, that's overrated. This, this, and that. Everything and more. And you're here. 11 locations later. Food trucks later. What's the motivation that you may have and that you have, if you could try to put it into words, for being the oldest out of four what is what does this do to you? What do, what do you what do you tell yourself every day? Remind yourself. Um, that's a good question because it's the, it's about not forgetting where you came from. You always have to keep that in mind. Hey, you know what? Yeah, it's cool that it's it's all nice and cute. Uh, you know, when, when, once you accomplish great things, but you can also lose them too. So I know what it is to. Not, not, not have anything. Mm -hmm. But the good thing is, I'm not afraid to lose it all either. Ooh, so, okay. I'm not afraid, you know, I'm not afraid to go back and work and, and do what I have to do. Yeah. But at the same time, that's, that, that's what keeps me humble and hungry. Yeah. So, you have to stay humble and hungry. Not because you accomplish a thousand views, a hundred views, a million views, uh, you know? Yeah. Okay, cool, I made it. No, what? You can meet it right now, but you can lose it later. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm the same person if I'm driving a brand new car or if I'm driving the bus. You know, soy tu amigo y somos compas y no importa lo que yo maneje. Yeah. But people tend to characterize you because you have a nice car. Oh, I don't talk to him because ya se le subió. Ya, no, pero, no, yo soy la misma persona. Ando en un carro nuevo, en un carro viejo. Yo sigo siendo tu compa, o sea. Yeah. No porque tenga un, un puesto, tenga yo todo Estados Unidos de puesto, sigo siendo tu compa. O sea, yo no pierdo los pies de la tierra. Y no hay que perderlos. Para sí. las personas que están escuchando esto, no perderlo. Porque es muy fácil perder una vez que ya eres famoso, una vez que tienes dinero, una vez que tienes poder, una vez que... 
ya estás más bonita, más bonito. Ah, gracias, yeah. gracias. No, <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Nah, I'm fucking around. Like, oh, you know, I didn't want to say it myself, but here we it's are. It's because I shaved today. Es que me bañé. Oh, shit. Me tocó baño. Ahora, ahora sí prendes la agua. Muchas gracias por... por Como en Coachella no me pude bañar, pues aquí me bañé ayer. ¿Aprovechaste? Sí, sí, qué sí. Buena, qué bueno, Sí, nada, mi vecino tiene la manguera ahí abierta y nomás la aprovechó. Un poco de agua. La aprovechó. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sí, pues, se trata de, de, de estar contentos, estar emocionados en lo que quieren hacer. O sea, nosotros empezamos en la birria. En ese entonces no había nadie más que, más que mi competencia que estaba en la birria, pero de ahí en fuera no, nadie estaba vendiendo birria. Se vendían birria, lo típico como en Guadalajara, uh, tortillas, tu plato hondo y todo eso, es ¿eh? birria de chivo. Pero no había nadie que estaba innovando. Ahorita pues ya salieron muchos, ¿ves? Que están, yeah. que están pues haciendo la birria. Pero lo que quieran hacer, o sea, lo puedes hacer. Simplemente dedícale el tiempo, dale cariño, dale amor y, y estás dispuesto a sacrificar para, para hacer algo diferente. O sea, trata de no ser una copia de alguien más. Y eso fue mi meta. Yo no quiero ser copia de alguien más. Yo no quiero ser la copia de, 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 de nadie. Yeah. Yo soy originalmente todo el estilo que hicimos, cómo hicimos la birria, cómo hicimos todo. No fue ni, ni, la, ni, ni copia de la persona que me enseñó. Lo hacemos totalmente diferente. Mi amigo allí en Tijuana me enseñó, y dice, así se hace la birria. Y dije, oye, pero ¿qué tal si le cambiamos la cebolla blanca por cebolla morada? Estás loco, que aquí en Tijuana la cebolla es, morada, es blanca, que no sé qué. Y yo, pero es que a mí me gusta la cebolla morada. Sabe, bueno. Oye, ¿qué tal si hacemos las quesadillas chiquitas así? Y la mulita así, no, que no sé qué, que no sé cuándo. Yeah. ¿Sabes qué? Pues esto lo voy a hacer así, y eso va a ser tejido de tacos, y así lo vamos a hacer. Man, you, you became a... You be for like a good while and still now, like you, you talk of the town of who is this guy selling birria, who is Teddy's Tacos mm -hmm. that has locations all over. Internet sensation, you know, and you're, how you said you're in commercials and series. Like, who is this Teddy's Red Tacos? Well, my goal is not to impress others, but to impress upon others. I'll repeat that again. My goal is not to impress others, but to impress upon others. Meaning, oh, he could do it, I can do it. Yeah. But not the birria. <laughs> Let me get that clear. <laughs> like, seeing my obstacles, sometimes we have smaller problems or bigger pro problems. But if I, I was able to overcome my problems, you can overcome them too. Yeah. You know, what's, what are you telling yourself? Why are you not finishing... Your career? Why not finish? You're not. Wh why are you not doing your dream job? Why? Because maybe you're you're too afraid. You're listening to your excuses. You're listening to your peers, or you're too. You maybe you're just too comfortable. You're trying to be cool, and you're not trying to to get dirty. You don't. You're not trying to get your hands dirty. Yeah. And that's the thing that's stopping you from success. You sometimes our biggest enemy is ourselves. That's exactly. Right. Because you know, we're too cool. We don't want to get dirty. Oh, my God. What's, on, what's my friends, my family, my peers going to think about this? ¿Por qué they think about that? You know? Si lo haces, van a hablar. Si no lo haces, van a hablar. It's good. Like, también a la misma vez, like, it, for some people, it's hard to, to stop, to stop thinking about what others think about you. You know, for some people. And for la mayoría, like, es una de las cosas, especialmente si eres hispano, latino, or like to, just in general like just living here like I'll, the older generation might have an opinion about what you want to do with your life and they're like oh no that's not for sure thing you cannot do that oh it's not that's what is it going to give you in return but then if you go with those what is it's like well, what if it does work out exactly mm -hmm. what if it, and we have to get excited about it y tenemos que tener cuidado a quien a quien le pedimos un consejo también mm. Por ejemplo, yo le pedía consejos a mi mamá. Mamá, cuando estaba yo en mi puesto, quiero comprar una lonchera. Ay, Teddy, vas muy recio, cálmate, cálmate. No tienes dinero, espérate, ¿qué pizza llevas? Digo, oye, si tengo más de 30 años, I'm broke. People at my age are getting married, having kids, y yo no tengo nada. Yeah. You know, I'm living at my mom's place. Me recomendó con un tío que, que era paletero. Dice, oye, él tiene ya tres paleteras, vete y pregúntale. Yeah. Y me dijo, Teddy, cálmate, vas muy recio. O sea, o sea, lo mismo que dijo mi mamá, vas muy recio. Digo, 
recio, yo voy lento, yo en mi mente, yo voy lento, para ellos voy, voy recio, pero oye, yo tengo 30 años, no tengo dinero, no tengo nada, o sea, para, y voy recio, what do you mean? Yeah. My mindset, I'm slow right now. So, yo dije, ¿sabes qué? No, no me importa lo que digas a esas personas. Mi mamá, la quiero, la admiro, la respeto, pero como en negocios no voy a tomar su consejo. O sea, como mi mamá es mi mamá, pero para negocios mi mamá no sabe de negocios. Mi mamá tiene miedos a emprender un, una lonchera, a emprender un restaurante. So, yo no voy a tomar su consejo para hacer ese negocio. Yeah. So, a veces ese es el problema que nosotros como latinos tenemos, o que sea la mayoría de las personas, tenemos ese miedo. Oh, ay, ¿qué va a pensar? Es que mi mamá me dijo esto, mi papá me dijo esto, mi abuelito me dijo eso. Pero ellos no saben, a veces no tienen la visión que uno tiene. A veces Dios nos pone esa meta, esos sueños, y, pero solamente es up to us to achieve them. You know, not, to, not for our parents, not for our sisters, not for our brothers. Maybe it's you, or you, or you. You know, yeah. but we have to believe it. We have to believe it long enough and be willing to pay the price long enough. Hey. So, con eso los dejo. Espero que mi testimonio les haga, no los haga impresionado porque no vine a impresionar a nadie. No quiero, o sea, quiero que, que mi testimonio sea, oiga, Teddy pudo, yo también lo puedo hacer. Teddy no tuvo excusas, yo cuáles son mis excusas. Yeah. O sea, yo no quiero pantallarle a nadie, o sea, no es mi intención, o sea, nada de eso. Quiero que mi testimonio sea una motivación para decir, si él pudo, yo también puedo. ¿Sale? God damn. I mean, with that, I mean, there's not a lot more to say. Dylan, did you come up with a quote this week? Uh, did you have something, something you learned over the weekend? No, but I came up with one real quick right now that he was talking this whole time. What's up? Um, what is it? And it says, <laughs> ¿Qué? I, 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 si pienso, wey. Si me, si me sirve el cerebro, cabrón. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you Fuck all of you For <laughs> laughing at me bro I know The delivery The delivery was good The delivery was good um, <clears throat> And it says It doesn't get easy But it gets better You know The process doesn't get easy But it gets better And yeah. it'll pay out at the end So I, I mean just to piggy off, piggyback off that And How we said since the beginning It's never too late To start something mm -hmm. You're never too old to believe in, in yourself and you're never too young to believe in a dream. Even if nobody believes in it, as long as you believe in it, you can achieve it, as corny as that sounds. And again, take this testimony off of this amazing person. <laughs> take this testimony off this amazing person that, you know, viniendo de, de nada or having nothing, nothing to, damn, put your name onto to building an empire and it's and a chain of restaurants. Restaurants, yeah. A chain, bro. Not just one or two or one lonchetta or one taco stand. These are many. Mm -hmm. These are fucking many. And not many like you. And how we've always said it, you can people can replicate it, but never you can never be duplicated like that. And until you go try these these tacos. It's very, Honestly, definitely tacos. recommend that. It's not, it's not just because he's here. Yeah, this, we're not even promo here, bro. It's just you need to go try this for yourselves. And, again, after listening to this podcast, this episode, make sure you subscribe, you yes, like, sir. and share. Take it upon yourself that if you're in a struggle right now and if you're in a dark place, not knowing what to do, whatever age you are, I hope you take this and you figure something out now because right now you're in the perfect time to start. Mm -hmm. So, it tells a lot of podcasts. Yeah, One more time. We don't miss a Monday. Teddy, thank you so much thank for coming so much, through, sharing you so your story much. with yeah, us. Appreciate you for the invite. I appreciate you, man. And, again, make sure you tune in to the vlogs that we're posting. Tune in to the podcast. And if you're done with this one, go back to last week if you haven't watched it and the ones before that. Yes, so, sir. it tells a lot. We out of here.